Serious doctors have read it. What is the most disgusting thing you've seen on a patient's body? A guy was street racing with his two-year-old daughter in the back of his car. He rolled the car. Little girl was fine. He, on the other hand, had his arm ripped off. When limbs come off, they're usually severed pretty cleanly in an accident or crushed and need to be amputated. No one in the ed had ever seen one ripped off. It was pretty brutal. Edit. Arm was not reattached. In medical school now and I had a patient with a hole in their back the size of both of my fists together due to a stage 4 pressure ulcer. I would have been able to touch their spine while we were cleaning the wound if I had been so inclined. We took a massive chunk of necrotic tissue off of this guy and the fellow I was working with said he would most likely die with the wound because it had gone so far. But nothing I can do can describe the smell. Even through an N95 mask and a surgical mask I was wearing it was so overpowering that I still have nightmares about it to this day. In med school I met a gentleman who the world had let down. Homeless, disheveled, malodorous, and he wasn't quite there upstairs due to chronic alcohol use. Sweet guy but very confused. He said he came into the ed because his foot hurt. Covered in random scratches and bruises which didn't bother him. We suspected he had significantly reduced sensation from neuropathy. There are different types e.g. alcoholic neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy. We put on some gloves. I extend his leg while the senior registrar removes his boot, and a chunk of his foot came off with it. Just a big chunk of heel. His foot was covered in necrotic tissue and the smell made my stomach turn. The old boot had been acting like a compression stocking, holding his foot together until it didn't. In medical school and was doing my rotation in the emergency department. I come in for my shift and the resident sent me into a patient's room to change their wound dressing. Easy enough. So I go in there and I see this dressing is absolutely filthy and smelled terrible. Apparently it had been on her burn wound for over two months because she was afraid to touch it. I carefully use saline and start unwrapping the bandage which caused extreme pain. As I got a couple layers down I start seeing things move and I thought it was me starting to get lightheaded from the smell but I looked closer it was thousands of maggots. Finally got to the skin, cleaned off all the maggots I could see then returned 30 minutes later to see it covered in maggots again meaning they had burrowed under the skin. I was a medical student for two years ultimately dropped out but I had an obese patient that had maggots in between her fat rolls. Saw a kid with a softball sized facial tumor that was basically rotting. The gross part was the hordes of maggots devouring this poor kid's tumor. It was incurable but every few weeks he would come in for the surgeons to debulk the tumor so that it didn't get too big. When the electrocautery pen hits a maggot the maggot vaporizes. Limbs displaced is the hardest for me. Saw a motorcycle rider who clipped a parked car with his foot and came in with his foot on backwards. I have to say as a nurse, the necrotic toe the surgeons elected to not amputate but kept saying, if it comes off during a dressing don't stress, was pretty fucked. You know that thing you can do when you bend a finger at the second knuckle and you can wobble the tip? That, but two toes. I am an ENT resident. I saw a gentleman with a history of cancer on his scalp. The ED called because they thought his scalp was infected. Walking in the room it immediately smelled wretched. When I looked at his head I did a double take because I saw a patch of his scalp literally move. When I examined closer I realized that it was a swarm of maggots crawling around his open wound which was exposed skull. Maybe the maggots actually helped control the infection, IDK, but I felt very sad for him. When I worked as a vet assistant, a family boarded their dying golden retriever with us. Dog had multiple tumors, each sitting on the skin maybe 1 cm thick and 5 to 10 cm diameter, many of which were necrotic and weeping. Whole dog ward smelled like roadkill. Very distressing. Doctors had tried to have the euthanasia talk with the owners several times but they just loved their dog too much to say goodbye. Not a doc, but a former ER nurse, I once had a guy that was brought in after lying on the same side on his apartment floor for about a week. The neighbors called 911 because of the smell. Everything had rotted away to the bone on his hip, and when he moved his legs you could see the joint and ligaments articulate. He was also covered head to toe in scabies. Anesthetist here. We were inserting an urinary catheter into an elderly woman. It smelled so foul, like some poor fish had died and been left baking in the sun for day. As the catheter went in, streams of brown pus started leaking out running along the catheter. Turned out to be a really bad UTI. Also necrotizing fasciitis, don't google it. Swastika tattoo probably. 
but necrotic limbs are pretty bad and a guy who had injected into his ass, got infected and his whole ass cheek had rotted away. That was pretty grim. Twenty shit covered reusable tampons, in someone's rectum. Lady didn't realize they had been going in the wrong hole all this time and thought they would dissolve. After the persistent diarrhea and abdominal pain she decided to come into us. And we went fishing. I'll never forget that adventure. Used to play an MMORPG and the guild leader was a nurse practitioner in the US. She used to play at work, so we were used to pausing raids for her because she was mostly in an admin role and it was a small town, so she'd only be gone five tenths of a minute. She shared some amazing stories, people nail gunning their hands to wood as an example but usually nothing major. One particular day she didn't come back, we knew it was possible, medical professional and all that. Turns out hers was the nearest clinic to a man's failed shotgun suicide, barrel under the chin and all he did was blast his face. She had one nurse holding literally his face together whilst she was intubating and the doctor did whatever the hell he could. Don't envy anyone involved in that whole process. Back when I was a student nurse, eventually changed programs, a lady in one of my practicum placements had a very large and deep pressure ulcer on her tailbone. It was so bad that you could actually see the bone underneath. She sadly ended up passing away about a month later sad face. In med school, the absolute worst was a case of Fournier's gangrene, a necrotizing, flesh-eating, bacterial infection of all the soft tissue of the genitalia and pelvis. Wasn't so bad when I first saw him in the ER, but the CT was pretty rough looking. And once we got to the OR and started cutting. No way to describe it. Edit. Spelling errors. Med student here. Saw a guy come into the ER for dressing of a wound on his soul. Wound seemed like your regulation diabetic ulcer around two inches across, with a whitish floor. Then the resident put three of his fingers into the ulcer, and they went right into the man's foot, all the way up to the resident's knuckles. Turns out the floor wasn't the floor at all, but what was left of the inside of that guy's foot. Worst part. The whole time this was happening, guy didn't even so much as wince. No sensation whatsoever. I was a medic but this dude was a chronic smoker and came in with a massive abscess on his neck, popped it and immediately the entire room smelled like damp old cigarettes. I didn't wear those scrubs again lol. I was a house surgeon doing my surgery posting. We had a diabetic patient with a case of non-healing ulcer infested with maggots. An absolute pain to remove. Used over half a liter of turpentine but still a few stubborn maggots were left. The patient was a security guard somewhere and apparently had spent some time in stagnant water a couple of days ago which probably caused the infestation. His leg ultimately did survive after extensive debridement, but definitely one of the most disgusting things I've seen. I've seen all those sorts of infected and odorous wounds, but by far the most disgusting and saddest thing I've seen in my career thus far. You know that green mold that grows on bread and rotting produce. In the ER recently, we peeled off a drunk homeless man's pissed jeans to discover that one of his ulcerated legs was growing a lawn of fuzzy green mold. Imagine being so utterly mentally ill and addicted to alcohol that you've lost control over your body to the point that mold colonizes your skin like that. My heart is still broken by such a sight. Nurse here. Had an infant come in with intussusception, childhood illness where part of the intestines telescope back into itself, causing an obstruction, who was misdiagnosed and sent home. A few days later is rushed back to the hospital via ambulance because his bowel was so obstructed it has become necrotic and he went septic, started to die. Ended up resulting in an extensive bowel resection and abdominal surgeries, and during his stay in the ICU we had what was left of his bowel in a silo bag. A silo bag is essentially a plastic bag that holds the intestines suspended in the air outside of the body. The point is to protect them while outside the body so the inside can heal more effectively. It was like something straight out of Saw 3. The kid ended up making a full recovery. Not gory, had a frequent flyer who loved, accidentally, showing off their swastika and other Nazi, white supremacist tattoos to POC staff members. Gory, leech therapy on a degloved shoulder. I love doing leech therapy, but having an area the size of my hand be a massive sheet of clot was just something else. Worst thing I ever saw was a degloved penis. It looked like an angry horn. All the skin from the bottom of the shaft up was removed surgically due to cancer of the penis. Saw a guy with a fungating rectal tumor. It looked like the clickers in The Last of Us. 
Not much bothers me after two decades of this. I don't like airway secretions, mucus particularly in tracheotomies or endotracheal tubes, and I really don't like the smell of melena, bloody stool. But the stories that seem to bother my friends and family the most involve old wounds and maggots. I work in the wound care center. We see a lot of diabetic foot ulcers or quadriplegics with severe pressure ulcers. They can be present for months or years and often initially come in with all sorts of nasty stuff in or stuck to them. Maggots being one of the more benign things from my standpoint but it never fails to gross out someone. I am a nurse. I saw someone who had fallen against a radiator and it slowly cooked the leg overnight it looked like meat. They died. There's more I could add but I don't want to violate privacy. Nightmarish. The obvious not a doctor but I work directly with patients all over the hospital. The other night, I was doing my rounds, checking on my patients, and I had to spend a considerable amount of time with one particular patient who had a roommate. The roommate slept with his mouth open the whole night, which isn't a problem. Except all his teeth were rotting inside his mouth. Every. Single. One. I can't even begin to explain the smell but it was by far the worst I had ever smelt. I started getting irritable and agitated and actually angry just by the smell and had to remove myself quite a few times to take some deep breaths outside. I still feel like I can smell it a few days later and gag occasionally when I think about it too hard. A swastika. I had a patient with a tumor on his face, that had eaten half of it. You could see inside his sinuses and the smell was horrible. Poor guy. This is just one of the many shitty things IV had to see. I'm not a doctor, but the must disgusting thing I saw where feet and shoes grow together. There are people who never take their shoes off, so they become one. It's disgusting. These are horrendous. And yet they must have been ordinary occurrences for doctors and nurses up to World War I. Truly unthinkable. You even feel sorry for Scarlett O'Hara. I spent four memorable hours starting at 2 a.m. with a junior surgeon attempting to unprolapse a large rectal prolapse. Picture repeated attempts to shove a small watermelon rectally. I was at the top end keeping her asleep, alive, but the smell of prolapse mixed with sugar haunts me still. Laughs maniacally in veterinarian. Maggots. Natch. Cuteribra. Don't Google if you have a weak stomach. But tumors that leak blood and feces and, if you're lucky, anal sac juice. Swastika tattoo? Why did I click this thread grimace? Head. Fat and lots of it.